Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Shooting the Shelf, our uh, our Wednesday one shot special. This week, I've got the one and only padded toy dude himself, Van Johnson, hanging out with me today. How's it going, Van? It's going well. How goes it with you? It's going having a good right. morning. I am. I am. How about you? I just asked you that, didn't I? Yeah, I'm I'm staying hydrated, trying to live my best life. Yeah. yeah, I I had a water, but I finished it, and I didn't put a new one out yet. So, good thing the, uh, that these Wednesday one shots aren't super long. Um, today we're going to be talking about something that I just watched this weekend. I don't know how recently you watched it. <laughs> I, I watched it uh, this weekend, and then I watched it last night before I fell asleep, and then I started to watch it again today because. Okay. Yeah, we'll get to that, but yeah. It is it is a it is a long movie. Um it's a, mm -hmm. you know, get comfortable, um maybe not too comfortable so you fall asleep unless you want to, and that's right. fine. But today, um and actually by the time this airs, it'll probably be a week or two after we recorded this, but uh um we're talking about the new uh epic western um that is a first of a multi-part series called Horizon an American Saga uh part Jeff chapter Moore. one yeah chapter one um so yeah uh van first first thoughts from you i know we talked a little bit before we started the show um you you like your background with westerns and stuff so what what was it that brought you to this one well i, I mean obviously it's probably you know most of the world right now people have really been jumping on that yellowstone vibe and kevin costner i, I we had talked about open range. Um, I enjoyed dances with wolves. I mean, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I'm a Kevin Costner guy, you know, and I, I enjoy a good Western and I, I was excited. I didn't even know because I'm, I'm so like disconnected from, you know, current events. And I didn't even realize it was released to HBO max until I stumbled upon it this weekend. And then I pressed play, not realizing I was about to drop three hours on it. And <laughs> I didn't, I didn't stop it. I mean, I, I, you know, I paused it to let stupid outside and that was it. Gotcha. Um, I, I knew it came out in the theaters and I knew, uh, initially they were going to release part one in like July and then part two was supposed to be sometime in August. And then reports were, it did so poorly in the theaters that they pulled chapter two and it wasn't going to happen. I, I looked it up to see, I mean, like with, if it's hitting HBO max, like there's gotta be something else going on here. Right. And it looks like that was like a studio, like release thing. They wanted to try to make it an event thing instead of letting it release properly. Um, so they were able to suspend the release of part two uh, for a while. That way they could debut it at Venice film festival in September and then release it to the that, public yeah. after the fact. So, which, I guess Kevin Costner said he always envisioned it coming out, you know, like six to eight months apart, not six weeks uh, or something yeah, like that. Uh, so yeah. I'm excited that that hopefully we'll get to see the rest of this. And I will definitely go back to the theater for part two. Um, yeah, I just I, I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it just wasn't on the radar, man. I, I, I barely get to go to the movie. Were it not for Jordan, my uh, heterosexual part, you know, life partner. Were not for him, I, I would never get to go see movies, you know, in theaters anymore. Um, okay. Jessica's grown up, and and y Logan's, you know, too too young to sit through a film, so I never go to movies were it not for Jordan. Um, but yeah, no, I, I will definitely be lobbying to go see Horizon Chapter Two in theaters because I just you you know damn well those uh you know prairie scenes with with just that that's got to be heard yeah. in surround sound, right? Yeah, like I've got a fairly decent surround. I mean, it's old, but it, it's fairly decent surround sound and, you know, it's a, a decent flat screen TV. Um, but there's just something about being in that theater for something. Uh, I hope we don't say this word too many times is like epic and truly cinematic as yeah. this 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 yeah. is. Um, that I, I watched it and like the first 10 minutes into it, I was like, I should have I should have gone to the theater for this. Like, mm -hmm. um. Cause I don't even think I got up to go to the bathroom or anything while I watched it. Like, I think I, I was a, I just sat through the whole three hour runtime of it. Um, like captivated. I um, wish I could do the same thing, but stupid likes to ring that bell to go outside at least every 
I don't know, five minutes. I I have no I have no living things in my apartment to take care of nothing to take out no human would you like a stupid no i mean yes but i i i I feel it would be a disservice to him i'll bring him up for retrocon and you guys just kind of see how it works out and then if it doesn't work out you know i'll see you at legion's con you you saw you saw how i was with that dog at uh at zolo con like you found it in like the last 10 minutes before teardown like you gotta come see this dog (laughs) Um, yeah. I think I feel like is that the only thing this movie was missing so far? It is chapter two, one of at least two to four parts. So um, there was a dog. Depending on, was there a dog? Yeah. Um. Uh, no spoilers, but when Kevin Costner was having a conversation with the Sykes brother, uh, a dog jumped up on him and he he brushed him away. That's right. That's right. Yeah. There wasn't a recurring dog as of yet in this movie. Now, True. without getting into spoilers, we'll save that for a couple minutes from now. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll let everybody know. So, um, stacked cast. Like, I knew it was a big cast, but like, as I, I didn't watch a lot, I, I saw like a teaser for this. So I didn't even know what the story was. And apparently, right. it has no connection to Yellowstone. It just. None. Yeah. Um, some, some people were saying. It, it interrupted Yellowstone for Kevin Costner, and I guess was kind of his way out of Yellowstone. Anyway, that's a different that's a different video for someone else to do. Um, so I was just surprised as I kept seeing like actor after actor and actress like show up on screen. Like, oh my gosh, um, it it blew me. Was there anyone particularly that really grabbed your attention? I mean, yeah, feel free to. I don't think I'm, naming yeah. the actors or actresses at this point will be spoilers. Gotcha. See, and and, and I'm horrible at, at names, but I feel like uh, he was the young guy that uh, um, uh, it, it would almost be a spoiler. I, I can't recall his name, but but he was only in there for a little bit. Barry Pepper was literally only in there to like etch his family's name onto a stone, and then I don't recall seeing him again. I mean, that yeah, was I Barry mean, Pepper? With the long hair, that was Barry Pepper. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I didn't even. I didn't, see. I was watching. I'm like, man, that guy looks familiar. I, I see it now, but I I didn't clock Barry Pepper in that moment. Yeah, there um, there was a few. Um, I was a big fan of Sons of Anarchy, and so Unser. Okay. Uh, or never mind. Never mind. Oh my gosh, I, I'm totally mistaking Deadwood. But yeah, no. There, there's there, oh. there's a. I was I was watching Deadwood today too. So no, there, there's a lot of. Okay. Uh, sl- I kept uh, who 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 was the hot widow, and that's like Sienna Miller. I mean, yep. You know, there there were some, yeah. Good, yeah, good, I, yeah, a lot of, a lot of um, quality. Sam Worthington. I mean, yeah, I, I was surprised to see him. Not like a lot of people, you know, give him beef with Avatar and other, you know, the Terminator movie. I, yeah. I think he's a good, like, I think he's a decent actor, and he's played a good part. I, I really in this like. Before. Yeah, I really like what we're seeing in this from him so far. So just to give everybody, before we get into some spoiler stuff, maybe, um, it's it's chapter one. It is a saga. So this is kind of, it's almost like a TV series. And mm. then you're getting like different segments from like different stories. Yeah. And because it's meant to be a multi-part story, we don't necessarily see too many of them, if any of them really overlapping, interacting at this point. I feel like all it's, it's a movie where a lot of these stories are going to converge Absolutely. or we'll find out maybe there's like a time difference with kind of like that season one of uh, the Witcher, where some of the timelines are before or after another story. And, you know, they'll, they'll intertwine that way somehow. But um, I gotta say the one actor that really surprised me not surprised me but i was really happy to see was uh michael rooker uh that plays you know from uh guardians of the galaxy and uh you know yondu yeah yondu yeah Yeah, i think i think he's 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 a he's a really great actor and i've heard he's really nice in person at conventions and stuff but like seeing him and he he plays basically the he's the irish um, sergeant right He's the Irish Sergeant Major that yeah, is, yeah. you know, works with uh, Sam Worthington's character. So uh, was I was really trying to remember the name of their superior. Um, he's been in a lot of stuff, and he he plays a damn good um, bad guy. I can't I, I I can't remember his name, but Danny Houston. 
Okay, there you go. Yeah, I, I like him too. Yeah. When I, I'm, it's like every other scene, you're seeing somebody. Holy shit! What, what's he doing in here? Yeah, yeah. It's it's great. It just like 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 we said, every new scene, every new story. You know, it's either coming at a, a previous story from a different angle. I, the, I will say the very beginning of it was a little confusing. I wasn't sure what was going on, but we'll, I guess, throw the spoilers up here. So if you're watching, starting around 1030, um, we might give some spoilers away here at this point. Um, I don't think anything we can say about this movie, uh, short of characters, you know, die, like specific characters dying. I don't think there's a lot of big plot points we can give away because it's very. Yeah, you won't really know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's some stuff in the Kevin Costner storyline. I think we should maybe skip some of the details of what's going on there, but that's it's, I looked at the clock. It was almost exactly one hour into the movie before Kevin Costner shows up. Yeah. Um, and uh, I thought that I was like, wow, that's a power move, you know, to, to lead your, your director slash main. I thought he was going to be the main character. Um, but I don't know if there is a main character at this point. I don't even, I mean, I'll go as far as to say, I don't even believe he's the most interesting character in the show thus far. Yeah. I'm intrigued by him, but like his, sure. his story is very matter of fact, cut and dry. There's not a whole lot of very stereotypical yeah. Western yeah. hero type. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, it just, yeah. I like Kevin Costner, but the, uh, the oldest Sykes brother. That's the guy that uh, my attention is really focused. He's a badass dude. And I, I just, I, I'm really, I'm really oh, wanting to see yeah. which way they go there. Um, the, uh, I'm horrible with names. The, I'm, I'm 100% the, brothers. Yeah, the tall one. Yeah. The really tall guy. The, the, the kind of like, you know, woodsman trapper, you know, hunter vibe guys. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the only two stories that really interlapped was their story. But I think it was just the earlier part of the story with them is what Kevin Costner led into. He didn't really have he much gave of a story. Me like a, uh, a Western Lobo vibe. I mean, this guy is like, yeah. yeah, he's not to be trifled with. But at the same time, he has manners. I, I really dug the way he like handled that 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 main um, conversation in the cabin. You know, yeah. he was more focused on, look, dude, you need to calm down and let me yeah. deal with this. And, and even after the guy stepped across the line, you know, he was, you know, he knew he did wrong. And, and then when he came back, you know, with mm -hmm. the family, you know, he admitted, you know, his culpability in the, in the, you know, not trying to give away spoilers, yeah. but you know where I'm at. I was very no, impressed. Yeah. 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 This whole persona is like, it's, uh, th there's a lot going on there, right? You know, he's not just yeah, a psychotic he, badass. I mean, he's yeah. like, He's got a moral code, it seems. He gives off a a kind of saber tooth vibe in his look from the the first X Men movie. Absolutely, but absolutely, much more well spoken. Like he's clearly, you know, not afraid to get his hands dirty and do the nope. dirty work himself. No, but like you said, he's got that code or that line he walks, and yeah, they're very interesting. I don't want to say villains, antagonists. We'll go with antagonists, you know, because yeah. you know, maybe they're, we don't know all the why of their side of the story at this point. So um, there could be some really interesting stuff to develop there later on. Uh, I think so. I, 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 I'm already calling it. I will watch a spinoff of that family alone. <laughs> I mean, I could every see time that. they show the cabin, there's like 40 people coming out. I mean, they got a lot of, there's a lot of stories to tell, dude. Yeah. And I, I will say I'm really captivated by the, um, was it, was it the Apache? And they, yeah. they kept throwing them. And I know they kept saying like native Americans or indigenous, but I, I believe that the tribe is a, maybe it was a more specific group of Apache, but I feel like they were identified as Apache yeah, at least in the when, movie. Uh, what's his name? Uh, not Owen Wilson, but Matt, w I don't know, his brother Wilson. Um, when he was talking oh, about Luke the guy Wilson. came up, Luke, there we go. And he was talking about the different, uh, you know, your Chiricahua and, and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to assume that they're, they are for the most part Apache, but I'm going to go ahead and, and, and jump on an unpopular stance. Maybe it was just me watching a movie like this as an adult. 
and having a family and just, I was fucking rooting for the Native Americans. I just like it's it. It was very brutal and it was very vivid and it, it was a little cringe. Some of the things that's going on, it's like mm -hmm. I'm sitting here thinking about it from their perspective. You know, take yourself back to the what 1868, and you have mm -hmm. a bunch of people just show up and they're just going to build a a freaking town in in, in your in your yeah. backyard and and they have absolutely no respect for you. They treat you like you're you know lesser than and yeah. Mm -hmm. It was, then, it was very, because, you know, that's a classic trope of Westerns is, you know, the Western settlers and the, the, the Native Americans and, right. and all of that. And um, so seeing it, like, the way the movie starts off, it focuses on this. I mean, it's called Horizon. Right. And it's going to be definitely a little spoiler. Like, the whole thing starts off around this little patch of ground on this either side of this little river. And it doesn't look like anything. Mm -hmm. But it's like dead. I, as the movie progresses, you learn it's right in the middle of their their like hunting grounds, and their right. and, it's, and the settlers have like scared off all the the game and everything. So when you see the movie, you know you see the 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 Apache attack, and it's brutal, and you feel bad for the the settlers at first, and then you see the story, and even though you have an elder like giving like you're only going to make it worse if you keep doing this. Like they, right. they do a really good job of even though outwardly it looked like the Apache did something or because they killed they did kill innocent people. Like I mean the kids and the families and stuff, but you you get you get a reason why it wasn't just cold blooded murder for the sake of you know, they they're doing a really good job of painting this picture. And that's the thing. I, I honestly maybe I'm missing it, but the westerns from like you and I growing up, I don't really feel like they tried to tell the tale from the Native American perspective that hey, these people came over here. We're just trying to protect our ability to get food and our ability to, you know, live our best life. I yeah. mean, that, you know, not and you know, when you get further into uh when they go into that uh little trading camp and then, you know, when they're going into uh where they're basically hunting for, you know, scalps for money. I mean, was, and even the little boy, he was completely disgusted by it at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah. Yeah. That was, it, so that, you know, sets up again, there's several different stories overlaying at multiple different places. And, you know, you know, after that first interaction and you see the, the Apache story and how there's a kind of a division between their people in their camp over what to do and how some of them leave. And it's just, it's really interesting. And even the, the wagon train where you've got like the two kind of uppity, not uppity, but more polite society. Yeah, I mean, that's, couple. I mean, they, uh, they were entitled. I mean, they were, they were absolutely Karen yeah. and Ken right there. Yeah. Yeah. And they, and the thing is like, neither of them realized they were doing even anything remotely. <laughs> like it wasn't, it wasn't like a malicious you know, entitlement. Like it wasn't like, oh, it's just, you know, oh, well, we're we're at this oblivious status everywhere we've been. Yeah, they just had no idea. And um I they're do like and again, I don't feel like they're really making too many people to be outright villains, villains in yeah. the same way they're not making anyone to be like outright heroes. Like there's a lot of gray. Um I think between all, all a lot of the characters and I will say I did, I got really teared up at the moment where um, was it Ellie, the little girl? Um, oh yeah. With, with the uh, soldiers. When, when they're get cause the, the, so this movie starts off like right before the civil war starts or in the, in the middle of the early days of the civil war. Yeah. Um, or at least the bulk of the setting of, of this particular story is and Sienna Miller's daughter uh, and her, they they're at this, this encampment, this fort out West and a bunch of the soldiers are leading to go into the go, go East and fight in, in the, the conflict for real. And um she runs in and there's two guys that have been kind of helping her and her mom out two younger soldiers. And she runs in and cuts up her little blanket, her quilt and like gives them each a flower. And, uh, Michael Rooker's character, uh, it gives her, you know, comes up to Sienna Miller and, she, and says, you know, man, it'd be really nice if she could find some more of those for the rest of the, 
the rest of the boys. Like that might be the only thing that keeps them. No, that was tough. I'm wondering though, it, from a timeline perspective, uh, cause 1868, when the, uh, Barry Pepper family were coming in there, this would be after the civil war, would it not? They're I think probably, that they're probably be. fighting Indian wars. I thought it was 1858. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought, I thought I saw him pound out 1868. I could be wrong. I'm going to have to go check. And again, it might be one of those things where the different timelines are, yeah, you know, you know, um, not lining up properly. Um, but I'll have to watch again. But I, I got the feeling that it was going back east to fight in, in the, the Civil War is the, the feeling. Because right. the description says it's set across the Civil War. Oh, on IMDb, it says a 15 year span of pre and post Civil War expansion and settlement. So, again, I don't there know if go. the stories are overlapping and winding That's through. So, 15 years. So, it could be either way, but whatever they were going off to fight, just that speech he gives and uh, like that was very, I mean, wait. was very, very nice. And I know we talked about it before, but the cinematics, the. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the cinematography, the the music, just everything about it. If you get a chance to go see part two in the theater, don't hesitate. Go go and take that time to see it. But I agree. Yeah, Hi yeah. highly recommend taking the time on Max to watch this. Yeah, zero zero regrets. I, I even got my father to watch it. Um, and like I like oh, I was nice. telling you, I've watched it a couple times because I I am horrible for watching something and playing too much on my phone. Um, and then I have like the memory of a goldfish when it comes to names and stuff like that. Clearly, just in our conversations, you can tell us paying attention enough to where I caught key plot points. But like, mm -hmm. for example, if you ask me Kevin Costner's character's name, I feel like it began with an H, maybe something Ellis. I don't know. But uh, Hayes Ellis. There we go. So, yeah, or I caught that. And, something like that. And yeah. that, that's yeah. after watching it for a third time now. Um <laughs> He's I actually do, the one the least interesting okay. character to me so far. Hayes Ellison. Hayes Ellison. There it is. Yeah. I I I like him, but yeah, a lot of the other characters are a little more interesting. I feel like that character's kind of expand as the, the events go on. But uh and I'm yeah, trying I'm to think of his name. Country. He played the lawn. That's that's where I'll Jeff Fahey. Um he played the lawnmower oh, man. Yeah. He's yeah. a piece of shit. Yeah. Well, I think I don't remember what his character said. I think they just called him the tracker or something like that. Yeah, I didn't bother to remember anyway. So, uh, but yeah. And then yeah, he, uh, the, the name of the guy at the trading post. He's he's a he's a well known actor too. The guy that was running the the oh, trading yeah. post and was trying yeah, to um, quell the situation. Yeah, and he's usually oh. really good at playing. Uh, bad guys. Yeah. Um. Man, why? Can't it was just I crazy. See? Like we said earlier, I mean, every other scene, it seemed like another celebrity or character actors popping up, and even at the end, mm -hmm. when they're showing you uh, forward scenes, um, I, I don't recall the name, but uh, of the guy, but I've seen him in like a thousand movies. The guy that Kevin Costner's character was squaring off with at the end in that uh, corral. About the oh, fist fight, yeah. yeah. I mean, that yeah. I can't remember the guy's name, but I've seen him in like a million things. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I at first like the movie as it doesn't do like a, a coming soon or next. Like you know, the last scene kind of plays out, and then it starts going back and forth. I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, oh, this has got to be a teaser for what's coming because yeah. I'm not getting any context for this stuff. Um, so yeah, it looks like all the stakes are going way up in the next like. The next one looks like it might be traumatic. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Um, as much as I want to tell everybody to go out and watch this, I would almost say wait until they announce when the next one's coming out and then watch it like a few days before because obviously we know that Lord of the Rings was a trilogy, but mm -hmm. I, I, I equate this to me watching the first movie and I'm like, damn, you know, they're just now going up the river. There's a lot more story to tell. And, and for whatever ignorant reason, I didn't realize that it was going to be two, 
to be continued. And so we're getting to the end of the, mm. the first one, like, what the, you know, and, and I'm very, you know, I, I'm, I'm really involved in it. I'm enjoying it. And it's like, I want to keep it going. This is the same for me. This, this movie, it just, it never got boring and I have severe ADHD. So for me to be able to sit there and like be committed to it, that's, you know. Yeah. I, I had to look his name, James Russo, and he's in Open Range, which is another yeah. Kessner, yeah. Kevin Costner Western we talked about. Uh, so, yeah, it's, yeah, I'm excited for the, I mean, and he's been in a ton of other stuff too. But, yeah, that's, um, yeah, again, uh, they're really good in this movie of making no character is just <laughs> black and white one way or the other right. for the most part. Uh, at least the the ones that feel like the important characters, you know. Um, and yeah. I mean, I've shat on Kevin Costner's character a little bit, and and by me saying that he's my least favorite, it's just because the other characters are are. I mean, there's so much complexity, oh, sure. so much diversity. It's like it's not easy to pick a favorite. Is he doing a fine acting job? Absolutely, but mm -hmm. you've just got these other plates that are spinning. They're like, wow, I, I want to know more about this. I want to know more about that, and it's. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, at this point, he's he's playing very much the what you expect character, and he's doing a great job. But like everybody right. else is like, I don't kind of know where this is going to go, but I feel like I know where his character is at least through this one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well, like the movie, we went a little long with our uh, Wednesday one shot on this one, but it's an epic movie, so we had to really give it a little is. bit more time. Um, so I think that's pretty strong recommendations for both of us to watch it, whether it's now and then you revisit it right before the sequel comes out or part two, excuse me, chapter two. Um, definitely recommend that. And, uh, any last thoughts from you, Van? No, I, I'm just right there with you. You know, I, whether you're into Westerns or not, check this one out. I mean, it's just, it's a damn good story and it's, uh, it's historical, you know, it's, it's based on all of our you know, for the most part, you know, it, it hits upon a lot of the stuff we studied in, in, high, in middle school and high school, you know, the great expansion. And, and um, I, I just feel like there's going to be a lot, a lot of great tie ins. They're not really skipping around and they're trying to, uh, you know, like you're not going to see a, a space shuttle fly across the screen. They're, they're really trying to keep this period accurate. And I, and I appreciate yeah. the hell out of that. Yeah. I, I, the whole time I was watching it, I, I'll add to what you just said there. Like, I, like, I felt like I needed to like wipe the dirt off of my arms while I was right? watching this movie. You know, like it felt like I was there and that was just in my home. So imagine being in the theater, just being fully immersed in that. Um, so yeah, it's, it really pulls you in and, and keeps you there. So I'm excited to see what comes next. No doubt. Well, very good. Well, thank you very much, Van, um, for everybody watching. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, uh, what's your Wednesday one shot?